Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The part of God's Word we will consider together this morning is our epistle lesson. It's taken from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning with verse 1. So then, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For in Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Indeed, what was the law was unable to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did when he sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to deal with sin. God condemned sin in his flesh so that the righteous decree of the law would be fully satisfied in us who are not walking according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. To be sure, those who are in harmony with the sinful flesh think about things the way the sinful flesh does. And those in harmony with the Spirit think about things the way the Spirit does. Now, the way the sinful flesh thinks results in death. But the way the Spirit thinks results in life and peace. For the mindset of the sinful flesh is hostile to God, since it does not submit to God's law. In fact, it cannot. Those who are in the sinful flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the sinful flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed God's Spirit lives in you. And if someone does not have the Spirit of Christ, that person does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. This is God's Word. Please be seated. Did you ever notice how many people have a problem with the Bible? I mean, they just don't like it. Uh, and I think the reason for that is the good parts of the Bible can only be understood by faith. So for people who don't have faith, they don't understand the gospel. They don't understand what forgiveness is. They don't understand uh, forgiveness through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. But what they do understand is sin and judgment. They don't like that. I mean, you consider how popular, how admissible, how acceptable is it today for someone to tell someone else that they're doing something wrong. What you're doing, your lifestyle, your, 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 your life choices, they're wrong. Well, that's almost the only sin that our society admits to today, intolerance. How dare you tell someone else that they're wrong? And yet, that's what the law does. And I believe that the biggest problem is not that they're morally offended at the fact that somebody might be telling them that they're wrong, but I believe that the biggest problem is because their conscience is telling them that the Bible is right and that they are guilty. And they do deserve punishment. And I think that's why all those, uh, the, the history of God's leveling punishment on, on civilizations and on peoples bother them so much because when we look at that and we compare that to what the law tells us, we know we deserve that. I deserve to be punished. Anyone who tells themselves otherwise is kidding themselves. I don't obey God the way that I should. Do you? I mean, how's today going for you? Have you loved God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength? Have you loved your neighbor as yourself? Or have you already had an unkind thought about somebody? Already had a selfish urge today? And that's just today. Today we find out that because of Lent, that's all been fixed. Because of Lent, we are uncondemned. And in Romans chapter 8, he tells us how that works. The first thing is that because of Lent, we're set free from death. So there, now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And it's not that Christians pretend we don't sin. We know that we do. 
But there's no condemnation because Jesus took the condemnation for us. Jesus took our sins away from us. So regardless of how deep, regardless of how repetitive, regardless of how disgusting the sin is that's in our life, it's paid for. In God's courtroom, he says, not guilty for everyone who is in Christ Jesus. Because in Christ, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of of sin and death. And he tells us what that means. First of all, he says that there are some things that the law is good at and there are some things that the law is not good at. Now, for the kids' sermon, at least for those children who were listening, uh, that's what they heard <laughs> about the mirror. The mirror is really good at showing you what you look like. It's really bad at fixing it. The law is really good at showing us that we're sinners. But it can't fix it. Even though our human nature, even though our human logic would tell us that it can. That we look at the commandments, and a lot of people look at the commandments, and what they see is try harder. And if you try hard enough, then you'll be good. Or maybe they look at the law. And they say, compare yourself to someone worse than you are. Then you can sleep at night. But what the law tells us is that we're sinners and that we deserve condemnation and punishment and God's wrath. And he can't fix it. The law is a powerful thing but only to open our eyes, only to warn. It cannot help us do anything that God wants, and it cannot fix what we've done wrong. But what the law couldn't do, because we live in a sinful flesh, God did. And isn't that what Lent is all about? Look at what God did. It's not about trying harder. It's not about giving stuff up. It's about, look at what God did. Look at what Jesus did. He says, he sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to deal with sin. And God condemned sin in his flesh so that the righteous decree of the Lord could, could be fully satisfied. God is a God of perfect justice. God does not look at sin and say, oh, isn't that too bad? I think I'll ignore that. Can you imagine a parent who would actually do that? I mean, he's our Heavenly Father. Imagine a parent who would look at their children and say, oh, look at that, they're killing themselves. Isn't that too bad? I think I'll go to something else. The punishment of sin is real. Justice is absolute in God's court. And sin cannot go unpunished. And because he knew we would never survive it, he took it himself so that in him the law would be fully satisfied. So that when we stand in front of God's throne, we have Jesus' righteousness. I am so glad I don't have to stand in my own. Sometimes I can't even remember where I put it. And when I do find it, it's always terribly disappointing. But we go to Jesus' righteousness, and it's perfect. So when we stand in God's court, we do not stand alone. The righteous decree of the law is fully satisfied. For in us, we are not walking according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So what that means is he's changed us. You know the word repent? You know what that means? It means to change actually means to change your mind. And when God works repentance in us, then God changes our mind, not only toward how I feel of what I'm going to do today, but also how do I look at sin? Because the mindset of sin, those who are in harmony with the sinful flesh, think about what, the way that sinful flesh does. 
Well, how does the sinful flesh look at people? Now, we tend to look for flaws. We tend to have the worst explanation of things. We tend to see how much we can get away with. I remember having the, uh, a, a variety. I think in, in every generation, I've had a, uh, a, a Bible class with the, the youth where they want to know, you know, how much can you sin and still be a Christian? Isn't that looking at it backwards? Is Christianity really how far away can I get from God and still be Christian? That's how the sinful flesh looks at it. The sinful flesh says, I'm going to find freedom in sin. And I just wonder how often the Holy Spirit rolls his eyes when we say that. Seriously? You're going to find health in poison. You're going to find freedom in slavery. You actually think sin is going to help you? The way the spirit, the way the faith looks at things is how close can I get to God? How far away can I get from sin? How can I resemble my Savior? Because he washed me clean and I want to stay that way. Now, the way the sinful flesh thinks <clears throat> results in death. But the way the spirit thinks Results in life and peace. I, I always remember that there was a scene on uh, it was a TV show called House. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but the big thing about that is well, most, if not all, the doctors were atheists and proud of it. Uh, and there, there was one scene where there was a Christian in there, and uh, he came in, and, uh, and the, one of the doctors was telling him, uh, you don't understand, you're a Christian, and he started lighting into him about how he didn't need a God to tell him what was right and what was good. He didn't need a God to make his life worth living, and he didn't need a God to forgive him and show him what truth was. And after, <laughs> after about five minutes of that, the Christian just looked at him and said, so how that's, how's that going for you? Because his life was a mess. Sinful life always is. It's one of the things that every human being has in common. That there's part of our life that's a mess. There's part of our life that doesn't work. There's part of our life that needs fixing. Because our life is infected with sin. And the answer is not try harder. The answer is Jesus. The sinful flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. In fact, it can't. The sinful flesh cannot. No, oh, where are we? There we are. Did I? No. Oh, that's where it is. Okay. I was about to explain what my notes look like, and then I realized, you don't care. So, <laughs> the, the, mind, the mindset of the sinful flesh is hostile to God, and I think one of the things that we can recognize uh, is that it is human nature that when someone tells you to do something, it is a natural response to say, oh, yes, I can. What's the quickest way to get a child to do something? Tell them they can't. And then all of a sudden they want to. Because that's the mindset of sinful nature. And until someone grows enough in their faith to, to, to value and to treasure obedience, the natural response, you can't tell me what to do. You're not the boss of me. I can do what I want. Turns out, I want to do exactly the opposite of what you tell me, just to prove to you that I'm in charge. That's the mindset of sinful nature. Not only do children do that to their parents, people do that to their God. You can't tell me what to do. Wasn't that actually Satan's first temptation? 
Did God really say you can't eat from any of these trees? You going to let God tell you what to do? You need to have your own freedom. How'd that work out for him? Sin kills people. Always has. Always will. And the sinful mind does not want to listen to God. But you are not in the sinful flesh, but you're in the Spirit, if indeed God's Spirit lives in you. And if someone does not have the Spirit of Christ, well, they're toast. But if he does, that's a kind of a, a, not a direct quotation. <laughs> but because Christ does live in you, your body's still dead. Your body is still subject to sin and all the ravages thereof. Your body will still be temporary while it's here on this earth. Your body will still lean towards sin whenever it can. But your spirit is alive. And all those things that are wrong with our body will be fixed in heaven. And all those things that are wrong with our body, Jesus takes care of while we're here because our spirit is alive because of righteousness. And it's very important to understand whose righteousness that is. Our spirit is alive because of Jesus' righteousness, because of everything he did for us. Because our righteousnesses, remember how Isaiah described those? All my righteousnesses are like filthy rags. So we go to Jesus' righteousness. And because of Lent, because of everything that he did, because of his sacrifice, we are uncondemned. The power of the law, that vast condemning power, cannot touch us because it already touched Jesus and it killed him. But in his death, we have life. And in his righteousness, we have peace. So because of Lent, it's going to be okay. Our consciences cannot condemn us successfully. Our culture cannot condemn us successfully. Not even God's law will condemn us because Jesus Christ paid the price, and so we are free. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.